Liliana. She made sure she was referred to as Princess Lily. Don't call her anything else. She won't answer you. <laughs> she'd usually hide and then she would call the Amity ambush. She'd usually spring out and go, rah! But she just stopped doing that. She just started not, and I just thought, oh, that's just phase and she's growing. But you just think, oh, kids change. So one day on a Friday, it was a Friday afternoon, I remember it very clearly, my mother-in-law called me at work and she said, she's just fallen over, literally nothing. There's nothing in her pathway, there's no toys, there's no nothing, she has just fallen over, I don't know what's going on. I said to my boss, I've got to go. The doctors looked at her and said to us, look, really would like to get her an MRI. And that's when they told us that they had found something. So DIPG, the long name for that is Diffuse Intrinsic Pontine Glioma. It's actually the most aggressive, most difficult to treat cancer to affect anyone, children or adults. Uh, it's an absolutely devastating disease and it's one of the only cancers for which there is actually absolutely no effective therapy. As an oncologist, the worst, most difficult conversation we can have with parents is to tell them your child has DIPG, they aren't curable, we have no treatments, we know that your child is going to die. I remember one night, it was December when she was dying, and so it was very hot. She always wanted to be in her bed with her brothers in the same room. So we'd start the night with the aircon on and we'd switch it off a couple of hours later. But we'd forgotten to switch it off. And I walked back in there at about half past nine and she was freezing and she couldn't do anything about it. And she was just lying there, sort of shivering because the sheet was off, the air con still blasting. She couldn't speak, she couldn't call out, she couldn't pull the doona up, she couldn't turn. She was just completely paralyzed, but cognitively aware. And that to me captures the doctor's facial expressions when they hear it's DIPG, that it's the worst of the worst. I cried. I cried, I can't, I can't tell you. There was nothing left. I hadn't left the hospital for two months. Leaving that hospital, I didn't want to leave the hospital. Because <laughs> then reality sinks in. You're not going home with Liliana, you're going without her. When she came to be dying, um, that was the difficult part. So we did tell her about the, the prognosis then, that look, there's, there's nothing that will make you better. She was just frightened and angry and terrified really, and because she didn't want to leave us. She didn't want to leave her mum. And so, yeah, it's something you just, can't get over. So for years we actually had none of this tumour to, to study in the lab. And we actually sat down with some parents and we came up with the plan of creating a protocol where we could, parents could actually donate their child's tumour after they had died. So our decision to donate Amity's tumour to the Cancer Institute was our way of really giving back or doing something in Amity's memory. Parents wanted answers, they wanted options, they wanted something and so did I. I was able to hopefully contribute and not have other families go through this crap and have Liliana's legacy mean something. For the first time, we proved we could actually grow these cells in the lab, and that was an incredible moment. We screened thousands of drugs, and actually the vast majority did absolutely nothing. But of those thousands, we found a small number that actually were surprisingly active. We now have several lead compounds that actually do look remarkably active in our laboratory experiments, and we are now taking some of those findings and we've started clinical trials. We certainly still have a long way to go, but we are for the first time starting to see in some select cases that these 
these drugs are working not just in the lab but also in some cases in the clinic as well in patients. I've been to the Children's Cancer Institute, I've seen the tumour bank, I've seen the researchers, I've seen it happen and it's so much further along than I would have ever have dreamt of to see that we are now so much further along because of people's donations, you know, it makes a big difference. They might not see it, but it really does. This is the Mount Everest of cancers. This is, it was never gonna be easy. This is 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration. We know in our hearts that we can and we will. We know as hard as it is, it is possible. In November this year, she'll be 15. So I still go to the cemetery and I still make her cupcakes every year and sing happy birthday. I feel like Amity just had so much to offer the world. She would have been just a great kid. She'd always wanted to be a scientist, even from a tiny age. Yeah. A cure for DIPG would mean a lot to me.